G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. In today's video, I'm going to be having a crack at predicting this year's AFL 22 under 22. So if you're unaware what that is, imagine like an all-Australian team where the eligibility is that players have to be 22 or under. And specifically, they actually have to be 22 or younger by the end of the final series, so grand final day, which makes finding players who are specifically eligible for this a little bit tricky, but I've done my absolute best. Now, I gotta say, I actually didn't know this about the AFL 22 under 22. The way it's decided is that the initial squad of 40 is selected by the AFL players board, and then fans through social media actually select the team by voting. I didn't know that. So I have done that before where I've punched in my 22 under 22 and often recorded it as a video. I thought that was just, you know, like try and guess the team. I didn't know that we were actually inputting votes that would ultimately decide what the team is. And I gotta say, it kind of does take away from the validity of this, but at the end of the day, it's kind of just a little bit of fun. I would probably give it a bit more weight if it wasn't fans just selecting the team because ultimately we're obviously gonna wanna vote for our own players. But anyway, I've come up with the 22 under 22, just a little bit of fun. I've had to make some really harsh calls in here. There's a lot of quality players under the age of 22 that I've had to leave out. But what I'm going to do is take you through my 22 line by line, and you can guys can let me know in the comments what you think. Before I do, it would mean a lot to me if you considered subscribing to this channel. I make daily AFL content, basically. I work through the entire summer to try and make a video every day, and I was able to do that. I don't think I've missed a day for about three or four months. So if you're looking for regular AFL content to get you through the football season as well, through the trade period, and of course summer as well, now this would be a good channel to subscribe to but let's crack into my 22 under 22 so i'm going to start with the back six and there's a couple of uh well there's certainly one obvious one i've got harry sheasel as a walk-up start now we know he's probably going to be playing the back line again this year and i'm ultimately on balance i think that's a good move so i've got sheasel as a walk-up start darcy wilmot came third in the rising star last year as well so he's a lock as is naziah wanganin miller who i think is a jet so those three are great, and I'm going to throw one Eagle Smokey in here, and I do genuinely believe that he could make this team in Brady Hoff. Now, this is tough, and I do think that Brady Hoff is already a pretty decent player, and probably the most advanced young West Coast prospect, but I won't labor on that. I'm throwing that in there as a wild card. I do genuinely believe him, and you can come at me in the comments. Picking the key back options was hard. Key position players generally under the age of 22 were well and truly not hit their prime. So I've gone with Mac Andrew, who won a Rising Star nomination for the Gold Coast Suns late last year. I drafted as a Ruckman, now playing back, and I think could easily make this team. And then another one is a bit of a wild card in Josh Gibkiss, who played 18 games in his first season, missed his entire second season through injury, and comes back in, and I do think, you know, could easily make this team. So it's a bit of a punt, but, you know, that's the fun of this. So let's go with the midfield. Um, I'm going to go with Miles Bergman on a wing. I think he's going to be playing a bit more wing this year. Either way, he's too good to leave out of this team. And there is an oversupply of medium defenders. I had to leave out some good ones. And I will talk about the honorable mentions after this video. But Bergman, I think qualifies because he's got a late birthday. He's probably going to be one of the oldest picked, and I just sort of stumbled upon that by accident. Uh, and the other two are walk-up starts in the center line. Nick Dagos obviously is under 22. Errol Goulden absolutely is going to make this team, provided, you know, they don't get injured. Touch wood. So then we've got the Ruck. The Ruck is probably the hardest one. Outside of, like, Toby Conway, I can't think of... Any other Ruck under 22 that's probably going to play regular game time this year, you might see West Coast have an injury crisis and maybe have to play their 18-year-old Colin Livingston there, but I think Toby Conway is a good prospect. It's a little bit tough. I could have cheated and put Sam Darcy as the number one Ruck, but I, I, I didn't. So I'm going to go with Toby Conway, and it's a chance with Geelong's list situation that Conway does play a bit, you know, as a at least second fiddle to Reece Stanley. I don't know exactly where that sits, but... That's a little bit of a left field one, but the midfield then is made up by Finn Callahan and of course, George Wardlaw as well. And we're all praying that he gets his hamstrings right because he just played eight games in his first season, but I, I foresee him having a good enough year to make this team for sure. So let's go with the forward line. And this again is stacked and I had to make some hard calls here. So Jason Horn Francis, I'll back in uh, to play on a forward flank, rotating through the midfield in this team. Machido Owens is an absolute star. Didn't have to think too hard about including him here. Same thing with Ollie Henry, who kicked 41 goals last year. So very comfortable with those, but let's talk about the talls, and this is where I did have to make a tough decision. I originally had Jamari Yugel Hagen in this forward line, and at the last minute, I switched to Jacob Van Royen. Now, how strong do I feel about this? Obviously not that strongly. We're taking a punt at this. Jamari is going to be a star, I reckon. 
but, but I think with Van Royen, like he, I think he's probably forms a more important part of his team's forward line, maybe at a stretch. So I could just foresee him, you know, having a better year this year, but that does not mean that he's a better player. I'm just taking a little bit of a punt on that. They're both absolute guns. Jai Amos, I think, will back in to have another good year this year. 41 goals in his second season, and, you know, I, I think he's still going to be pretty much the main avenue to go for Fremantle, so I couldn't leave him out. And then Sam Darcy, in his third season, still eligible for the Rising Star and also still eligible for this 22 under 22 and will probably be the second ruck in this scenario. So is it ridiculous to have Jamara not in this team and Sam Darcy in it? Well, my argument there would just be that I kind of wanted the second ruck option and that is exactly what Sam Darcy is. He's about 208 centimeters, but you'd imagine that Jamara has a better year. So let me know what you think about that. Let's talk about the bench options. Again, uh, this is where I had to really split hairs. So I've picked Max Holmes on the bench and I like this because he's also a, potentially a defender this year. We saw him deployed in that role against Carlton in the preseason game. And with his speed and skill, I think he could genuinely become a bit of a different look player this year and also you know, spend some time at stoppages. So Max Home is a defender midfielder in this team. Luke Pedler is an Adelaide player that I will have in this team as a forward midfielder rotation. Kicked 26 goals last year, I think. And you know, I don't know exactly how much midfield time he's getting this year. But either way, probably good enough to make this team. I'm going to put Riley Sanders in this team. And it's funny because I've picked Colby McCurcher to win the Rising Star, but he's probably going to play on a halfback flank, and I think the competition there is too strong. You could say McCurcher makes it instead of Brady Hoff. If he wins a Rising Star, he probably will. But I think the difference between, say, a Hoff and a McCurcher is I, I can imagine her, McCurcher being a really damaging rebound player this year, and I, I love him. I've talked him up all summer, so... Give me a break on that one. Hoff though kind of is a hybrid where he can play as an intercept third tall. He's like six foot three as well. So I'd imagine that's where I'm gonna get criticism for this video, but you know, sue me. Riley Sanders though might be the only draftee I have in this team, uh, which I don't know if that is going to be realistic. The only other one that really comes to mind is McKercher. He could have made this team, uh, but I've gone with Sanders and I think Sanders will have a big year this year. It contradicts my McKercher call, I know. I know, but we're all having fun here. I'm not necessarily locked into all of my predictions simultaneously. Uh, Jesse Motlop is probably the next forward I have into this team. Uh, still eligible for the award, kicks about a goal a game, and I think he will improve on that this year and probably my best bet for that. So let's talk about some of the players that I had to leave out of this team, uh, much to my own chagrin. So let's talk about defenders. You know, I just covered Colby McKercher there and, you know, conceivably should be in this team, I know. But at the same time, you know, obviously hasn't played a game of football, so it's not, it's not like he's a lock for this team. And also, you know what? Yeah, I know the Eagles bias thing is coming, but I gotta say, I've just done a tier maker series where I ranked fours, backs, and mids. I had West Coast bottom tier in all of those categories, which I think is possibly a little bit harsh, to be honest. Well, at least on our forward line. Our forward line's not that bad. I have on numerous occasions not put Harley Reid as my rising star winner. I have also put a second last. So let me just have this one. Let me have Brady Hoff in the team. Anyway, the other contenders who could conceivably make this in the defensive role, Braden Campbell maybe as a running defender. I do think as a distributor off halfback, if he plays in that role this year, he could have a big year and certainly worth a mention. There's also Daniel Curtin. Again, tough to project what a tall player is going to do in his first year, but I do think there's a serious chance he is a rising star contender. Harley Reid, of course, is a contender for the 22 under 22, and Heath Chapman from Fremantle as well. Those are some names that came to mind, but let me know in the comments what you think. As for midfielders, probably the, the three that I thought were the next best likely. Josh Ward from Hawthorne could conceivably make this team, but I do think it's a strong competitive midfield in this team. Same thing with Ben Hobbs from Essendon. I like those guys. Matthew Johnson from Fremantle is also an outside chance to make this team. Maybe from West Coast, Ruben Jinby, but I actually don't think he's as realistic as any of the guys I've mentioned so far. It's a, it's a tough competitive team. Like We've got two genuine Brownlow contenders in this under 22 midfield. It's whack. And there's a number of forwards as well. So Logan McDonald could do enough to win a key forward spot in this team. Archie Perkins made the squad last year and a decent half forward option. Talked about Jamari Eugle Hagen, Bailey Humphrey as well, Riley Philthorpe. And Jack Ginevan is also still eligible for this award and he could go either way. If he has a big year kicking 40 goals again, then you'd think he waltzes into this team. But anyway, guys, just a little bit of fun trying to map out the 22 under 22, but let me know what you think in the comments below. I look forward to your input. Can't wait for the criticisms and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.